Hi, you guys. Welcome to Audrey's Reading Area. Shout out to my grandbabies, Korea, Sana, David the Third, and Kaden. I love and I miss you guys so much. With all my heart. Alexa, what time is Audrey's Reading Area? Audrey reads in her area live at five. And please subscribe. L-I-V-E. Live at five, you guys. Please subscribe. Please go to Audrey's Reading Area on YouTube. Audrey's Reading Area. And smash that subscribe button for me. Smash it up. Yes, we're still celebrating National Women's Month. And we are still doing on today's Wednesday. So we do multicultural awareness things, multicultural um, books. And so to you today, I'll be reading about the Lakota, Lakota Sioux. The Lakota Sioux. This is a true book. The Lakota Sioux. Written by Andrew um, Santella. Andrew Santella. Mm -hmm. But first, I'm going to ask you to click like and share my videos. Again, go to YouTube. Look for Audrey's Reading Area and smash that subscribe button for me. All right, all right, all right. Now, I'm just going to jump right into this book. Just going to jump right in. Let me see. So... It does say that, let me tell you about the picture on the front cover. It says, Lane Roy uh, Galthia, Associate Professor of Education, University of Houston. It says, the photograph on the cover shows a young Lakota Sioux on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota wearing a tribal banner for having won a contest. Aw. Aw. She won a contest. The photograph on the title page shows a Lakota Sioux father and his daughter. Title page. Lakota Sioux father and his daughter. Oh. Yes. A young Lakota Sioux boy dancing at a powwow. This is him right here, dancing at a powwow. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's jump right into this book now. The Lakota moved west. Hundreds of years ago, the Lakota Sioux lived in the woods of what is now Minnesota. These American Indians gathered wild rice in birch bark canoes. Some Lakota women grew beans, squash, and corn. Look at this map. Nice. The men hunted. Oops for deer and finished in rivers and fished in rivers and lakes. The early Lakota traveled on foot and used dogs to carry supplies. See, he says this dog, Travois, carried everything from food to belongings. Look at, look at, aw. Their dogs pulled something that looked like a sled. It was made of two long poles that were attached to the dog's shoulders. The ends of the poles they dragged on the ground behind the animal. The Lakota loaded their belongings onto a net that stretched between these, the two poles. French explorers called the Lakota sled a chuvoy. Around 1700, the Lakota began to move west. They found horses and buffalo on the plains in the west. Both animals became very important to the Lakota. They called the horses sacred dogs. The Lakota soon used horses instead of dogs, to pull their chuvois because the horses could pull much larger loads. Horses could travel greater distances too. Most important, the Lakota learned to ride the horses so that they can travel faster and farther. This gave the Lakota an advantage in their wars with other Indians. Mm. The Lakota heaped praise on young warriors who captured horses from other tribes. Look at the picture here. They captured horses from other tribes. Mm. Says horses were very important. The Lakota Sioux rode horses in wars with other tribes. Also, horses were traded for tools. Mm. Okay. They could also follow the buffalo herds on horseback, which made them better hunters. Horses helped make the Lakota wealthier too. They were able to trade horses for guns, knives, and iron kettles. 
When a young warrior wanted to marry, he would offer a horse to the young woman's family. The Seven Council Fires. The Lakota were part of the Great Sioux Nation, which was originally made up of seven American Indian groups. The Sioux called these groups the Seven Council Fires. The seven groups lived far apart, but they stayed in contact with one another. They spoke three different dialects or different forms of the same language, but they could understand one another. Once every summer, the Sioux gathered for a huge meeting. They celebrated the important things they had done that year, and they made plans for the future. The Dakota or Santee Sioux made up four of the council fires. Two others made up a group called the Nakota and Yankton Sioux. The largest council fire was called the Lakota or Teton or Teton Sioux. Today, these groups prefer to be called Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota because the name Sioux actually came from the Chippewa people who were enemies of the great Sioux nation. Mm. The Buffalo. After they moved west, the Lakota built their lives around the Buffalo. They moved around a lot following the Buffalo herds. The Buffalo provided them with everything they needed, food, shelter, and clothing. They ate Buffalo meat dressed in robes made by, made of Buffalo hides and drank from cups made of Buffalo horns. But before I turn this page, let me show you the pictures here. It says the Lakota Sioux made many things from Buffalo, like spoons right here, an arrow case, and moccasins. Wow, interesting, right? They used Buffalo bones to make needles and scraping knives. They used the ribs of the Buffalo to make sleds. They even used buffalo skulls to decorate the altar for sacred ceremonies. Hunting parties were often very large. Scouts would ride ahead in search of a herd of buffalo. And then right here it says the Lakota Sioux drive buffalo over the cliff. I wonder why they did that. I guess we'll keep reading and find out. They drove them over the cliff. So on horseback, the Lakota surrounded the buffalo and shot them with bows and arrows. Sometimes they stampeded entire herd of buffalo off a cliff. Hmm. It doesn't say why, huh? After the hunt. When hunters got back to camp, the Lakota celebrated with dancing and drumming. Women cooked or preserved the meat in different ways. Sometimes they roasted the buffalo meat over a fire. Other times they dried the meats on racks to make it last a long time. Smart, right? Yeah. The dried meat was then cut into thin strips called jerky. The meat could also be pounded into a paste and mixed with berries. Hmm, that's interesting. Either way, it was easy to carry while the Lakota were traveling. The Lakota lived in teepees, they, they, which were tents that they often covered with buffalo hide. A teepee is made of wooden poles tied together to form like a cone. A cone. In cold weather, the Lakota might have covered a teepee with as many as 10 buffalo skins to keep out the bitter wind. Their teepees were light and easy to move. They could be set up and taken down very quickly. There were special rules for life inside the teepee. Women kept to one side of the teepee and men stayed on the other side. Wow, I didn't even know that. No idea. Over here it says, the Lakota Sioux lived in teepees on the reservation. Sometimes the Indians decorated the teepee by painting it. See, this is the teepee and this is the one that, one of the painted ones. Interesting. Hmm. During meals, women and children did not begin eating until the men were finished. Other tribes feared the Lakota warriors. Wow, I wonder why they feared them. They were scared of them, right? Lakota warriors wore a crown of eagle feathers or war bonnet on their heads. Boys were taught that they could become leaders by showing bravery in battle with other Indian groups. 
the Lakota and other Indian nations raised one another for horses. They also fought for control of the buffalo grazing lands. The best way for a Lakota warrior to show his bravery was to strike an enemy warrior. This was called a coup. Look at the warrior. It says a Lakota Sioux wears a war bonnet, also called a crown of eagle feathers. Mm. Winter counts. The Lakota kept a record of their history by painting a series of pictures on buffalo skins. These pictures were called winter counts. They showed scenes of battles and other important events. They told the story of the Lakota year by year says the winter counts were recorded in various ways, such as one large painting or as a book. Interesting. Interesting. Religion. The Lakota believed that everything in the world had a spirit, including rocks and trees. The most powerful spirit was called the great spirit or the grandfather spirit. The Lakota tried to live their lives in a way that would please the spirits. One of the most important Lakota religious ceremonies was the sun dance. It was held every summer and lasted for several days. It included dancing and singing. Some Lakota showed their courage by going through painful rituals as part of the sun dance. The Lakota believed the sun dance would bring good fortune to their people. So here are some pictures here. It says in a painting on the top by Frederick Remington, the Lakota travel to the sun dance and below they participate in the dance. Interesting. Hmm. The Lakota resist. In the 1800s, more and more white settlers passed through Lakota territory on their way west. The U.S. Army began building forts to protect these settlers. A Lakota chief named Red Cloud protested to the U.S. government but it did no good. Finally, he and a warrior named Crazy Horse began leading attacks on the army. So Chief Red Cloud and Chief Crazy Horse. Get to see pictures of them. Nice. In 1868, the United States admitted defeat and the army left the forts. The Black Hills of South Dakota was sacred to the Lakota they call these mountains the heart of everything that is. When gold was discovered there in 1874, thousands of white people poured into that area. The Lakota fought back again. In 1876, Lieutenant Colonel George Custer and more than 200 soldiers attacked thousands of Lakota and Cheyenne warriors. Let's read this. War parties fought other tribes and white settlers. Here's a picture. Interesting, interesting. The Indian warriors killed Custer and his entire force in what became known as the Battle of the Little Bighorn. But the Lakota could not resist the U.S. Army for long. One by one, Lakota leaders, like Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull, surrendered. In 1890, Chief Sitting Bull was murdered on Standing Rock Reservation where the U.S. Army was holding him. His people fled to the Pine Ridge Reservations in South Dakota for protection. So right here in the painting, Lieutenant Colonel George Custer and Crazy Horse sent to fighting during the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Wow. Look at that. Sitting Bull. However, U.S. soldiers killed more than 250 Lakota. After this tragedy, the Lakota stopped fighting. During this time, white hunters had almost wiped out buffalo herds. Without the buffalo, the Lakota way of life ended. Most Lakota then lived on reservations where life was very hard. There were few ways for them to make a decent living. The Lakota Today. 
Life is still difficult for some Lakota today. Some of the people are very poor. Others suffer from illnesses caused by not eating properly. Well, there were other reasons for their sicknesses too, but we won't talk about that right now. Others suffer from illnesses, um, well, caused by eat, not eating properly. Jobs are hard to find on Lakota reservations, but still the people struggle to make their lives better. Children learn about Lakota arts, languages, and history in schools on the reservations. Some go on to attend tribal colleges, such as um, Aglala Lakota College on the Pine Ridge Reservation. Since today, Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota is where most of the Lakota Sioux live. Hmm. So this is Billy Mills. He crosses the finish line here. Um, Billy Mills in Aglala Lakota was born in 1938 on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. He lost his parents when he was 12 years old. In the 1964 Olympic Games held in Tokyo, Japan, he became the first American to win the 10,000 meter race in track and field. Billy holds up his gold medal here. Hmm. The Lakota also continue some age old customs like the sun dance. And so here at a powwow, which I love powwows. If you have never been to a powwow, go visit a powwow. Ask your parents to take you to an Indian powwow. Just Google it and you'll see some in your area at certain times. They're really, really exciting. At a powwow, the Lakota Sioux celebrate their traditions. They dance, they play musical instruments like drums, opposite left. They display their crafts, like a mirror bag by Diana Miller. Look at that, really, really nice. On weekends, they take part in celebrations called powwows. At powwows, they wear ceremonial Indian clothing and perform traditional songs and dances. Mm -hmm. In the Black Hills of South Dakota, Artists are working on a huge sculpture of Crazy Horse. It's really nice. Look at that. The famous Lakota warrior. The statue is more than 560 feet high. It honors his fighting spirit and the spirit of all the Lakota. Look at that. It says the model of Crazy Horse from which the statue is being built. Hmm. The end. Oh, wow. So there are some important words and I will let you read and pause and read and pause when you read these words. Yes. Meet the author. He lives in Chicago, Illinois. He graduated from Loyola University. He studied American Lit, but we are focusing on the Lakota Sioux. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mom, for always being here while I um, do my readings. All that love and support. I love it, love it, love it, and thank you. Thank you for sharing my videos, too, you guys. Sh just click share and hit post on your page. And then don't forget to click like, click share. Don't forget to go to YouTube. Look for Audrey's reading area. Audrey's reading area. Yes, and that's it. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll see ya tomorrow. Only one day away. We'll be live. L-I-V-E. Live at five. I might actually be a little early tomorrow. But I will see you then. Audrey's reading area.